healing power of breath work from my perspective. Okay, so this is my perspective. This is based on all the research that I've done since healing myself from a chronic illness, myself recovering, where breathwork was a big part of my uh, overall recovery. So I'm going to share with you some key points from this. And the first one is I'm going to go into my own personal story on how I healed my own uh, illness at a chronic condition, which was deemed incurable. Uh, however, I am in remission. And, you know, so in my opinion, remission is just the same thing as a cure. We're never really cured. Curing means actually going back to how you were before the condition. But you, in order to heal from a chronic illness, you can't go back to who you were before because it was who you were before that gave you the illness in the first place, okay? According to the Vedic system, Ayurvedic system, we are, our diseases are a, um, an environmental thing, like the environment you surround yourself in, internally and externally. So you can't really cure yourself. You never cure. You, I'm in remission, according to the me medical system, However, I believe I've changed so many factors in my life where the breath was a big factor in this, helping me get there, that I'm a completely different person. Like who I was you know, 10 years ago is a completely different person. My environment is completely different. My social circle is completely different. The environment I live in, like I live in Thailand, is completely different. Uh, and I have a different career. I have a completely different job. I do what I love to do. I'm not fighting against an angry system, a uh, oppressive system, <laughs> which has the healthcare systems become. So I'm much more who I truly feel I am supposed to be, my truth. And the breath helped me unravel many layers of my conditioning. So I actually used to be a pharmacist uh, in the community over... Uh, 15 years ago now is when I qualified and it's where I really got my insight into how the healthcare system works and I just felt a huge void in 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 the system I felt there was something really missing and I felt empty going to work I did I felt helpless I didn't feel like I was really contributing to people's health and happiness and I was just like working in a factory dishing out pills all day long and not even having any time to think or even speak to patients. It was insane, the kind of work conditions I was in. And not all pharmacies are the same. Some are extremely busy, badly managed. Others are very amazing uh, kind of places that where the pharmacist really cares about the patients. But at the moment, let me tell you something, there are more people leaving the pharmaceutical profession than joining it. So that that says something what happened was over the years i get i felt more and more depressed i felt more and more stressed going to work i dreaded waking up in the morning uh going to work you know driving for an hour to do a job i didn't want to do standing on my feet all day long surrounded by people like just not happy with their lives not satisfied and then i'd go home and i would down my sorrows usually uh, go out partying on the weekends. It was a crazy vicious cycle of trying to get over the stress through techniques that the um, that are very common, which involves like drinking, partying, consuming things, you know, to try and numb the pain. And I became comfortably numb for a while until I had a big breakdown. Uh, I was actually trying to escape the profession by doing various little business ventures on the side. Nothing worked. I got into massive debts as well. And then... I got called kicking and screaming by a friend of mine. Best thing that happened to me, he bought me a ticket. I owe him my life actually for this because I was very skeptical about anything kind of uh, guru-like, you know, uh, motivational-like, you know, like Tony Robbins stuff was not, not really something that I was uh, into at that time. I thought it was not cool and I just didn't want to know about it. You know, my ego was way too too big uh, to have somebody tell me what to do at that point. But anyway, I, I had no choice. I went to it and boom, best thing I ever did. Changed my life completely. And on the last day, it was the first time I heard anyone talk about uh, diets, nutrition, uh, breathing techniques, meditation, and all these other lifestyle techniques that you could do to heal yourself, to facilitate your own healing and to get to your optimum health. 
This idea of optimum health, being at your full power, was not something that we get taught by society or even at university, especially when you're doing any kind of medical training. You're not taught, taught these things. So I uh, was also skeptical. So I was like, okay, I have in my pharmacy constant uh, stream of sick patients coming in all the time. So here's the play, perfect place to test out Tony Robbins and prove him wrong. So. I actually figured out a system to change people's diets by writing little shopping lists. And I would give patients analogy to follow. I would say, and you only have five minutes with a patient, by the way, you have to in five minutes convince someone to make a huge change in their lifestyle. And so what I'll do is I'd find patients who had a lot of uh, medications who shouldn't be really on them at that age that they were at. You know, they, I felt that, that there was something involved with their lifestyle that could be changed. So I'd come up with an analogy based on firstly asking a patient, you know, do you really want to be taking this kind of laundry list of, of pills? And most people don't want to take them. Okay. So I would say like, imagine your body is like a, is like a super efficient bio engine. And just like your car, imagine what would happen if you put diesel into your petrol engine or petrol into your diesel engine. And people would, you know, understand that analogy. They'd be like, yeah, 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 the car doesn't work properly. I was like, well, just imagine what you're doing is putting the wrong fuel into your super efficient, highly functioning bio engine. You've been doing that for a long time. Imagine what would happen? So they'll be like, okay, yeah, that, okay, that makes sense. So what is the right fuel? You know, so I'd be like, okay, so then I would explain the right fuel for their, who they are. So you can tell like somebody who's on uh, medications with type 2 diabetes, uh, you can actually reverse a lot of these issues like diabetes uh, and obesity just by simple changes in diet. And you'd be amazed at how few people knew even how to cook their own meals. Like a lot of people were relying on processed ready meals. There was one patient, for example, who didn't even know what a lemon was. When I told them to swap one of their fizzy drinks, they, they were consuming a lot of sugary fizzy drinks for fresh lemon juice to make their own lemonade. They had no idea what a lemon was and they brought to me um, a bottle of Jiffy liquid, uh, this Jif lemon juice this like this heavily processed lemon juice and asked me if this was the right stuff and then i had to go to the fruit counter to, to explain to them actually no this is lemon and stuff like that crazy stories people consuming crazy amounts of fizzy drinks coffee on a regular basis filled with sugar and i was shocked as well how um the doctors were not spotting these things or they were not even asking people about their diets and lifestyles because they're also overwhelmed. They don't have much time. So, you know, but it was apparent that there was a void. There was something really missing. So those who actually followed my ideas on the, on the shopping list were coming back and reporting dramatic transformation. And I had people coming off blood pressure pills, people coming off diabetic pills, people losing weight finally, all kinds of amazing stories. And this got me a, a bit of a name for myself and it ended up, I'm gonna like speed up the story a bit, but it ended up me getting promoted to the head office of a corporation in the UK that has a supermarket and pharmacy in the same place. And I came up with a concept of giving out healthy shopping lists to patients, either through the pharmacists themselves, because everyone listens to the healthcare providers. Doctors don't have time, so the pharmacists are the next point of, you know, of, where people go to. So eventually it was gonna become a web-based thing. Six months into it, the idea got shelved. It was uh, too controversial at that time. It probably would have affected the profits because um, getting everyone off factory-based foods isn't a good idea for a big supermarket because most of their profits comes from the heavily processed factory-based foods that people consume. So it was an uphill battle trying to convince people, even though the director wanted me to do this. I had a huge obstacle getting this through from the managerial teams. And I also saw what it was like to work in a corporate environment and how stressful even that can be. Uh, how robotized people were and how soulless the whole environment was. I just didn't fit into it. It wasn't my environment at all. So I really started to have nervous breakdowns just there in that situation. And boom, I got hit the lightning bolt with a uh, chronic illness called ulcerative colitis that uh, is an autoimmune condition that left me housebound for pretty much a year. And it was 
the worst experience of my life, but also the best thing. It's the most transformative thing I've ever been through. There's nothing that can actually match what happened in that those few months where I recovered. And so what happened was actually I so I surrendered to the the, the healthcare system at first because I had kind of lost hope for humanity. I lost faith in myself. I was feeling like a bit of a failure for not getting the project through and then getting sick. And I just didn't know. I was very confused. I didn't know what was going on. I was like blaming God for giving me this disease. I was like, I mean, I'm trying to help people and then I get hit with this. Like what kind of karma? What it, what it was going on? It doesn't make sense. Why am I getting punished for trying to help people on such a big scale? And it all made sense later on. So... They say God stands for gift of desperation. And in a moment of serious desperation, because I was going to toilet like 40 times a day, I'd lost three stone in weight, which is about 25 kg. I was like a total stick insect. And I went to the consultant who actually happened to be this huge, like hugely obese lady who was supposed to be a, a, a gastro consultant and a, a top expert in, in the UK on this. And she told me, that stress doesn't have an impact, diet doesn't have an impact, and that the only thing you can do is take the medications, and if they don't work, you have your colon removed, or you can be a guinea pig for this drug that hadn't been tested yet. And the medications weren't working. I was like completely confused because I was told now by a, a top authority that stress doesn't have an impact, diet doesn't have an impact. So I'm like, well, what, what am I supposed to do? And so I just surrendered. and. Nothing got better until uh, on one fateful day, a dear friend of family came uh, and she's Swami Ambikananda in the UK. She runs a really good yoga school. She said to me, you've got a gift. If you can heal yourself now from this situation, if you can recover with your care for, for people and your knowledge and, and your pharmacy background, your scientific background, you could be an amazing role model for other people. You could really inspire and help a lot of people um, and this gave me a huge, like, like new perspective about my situation. And she gave me a lot of hope. And she said, I can teach you the, the fundamental uh, basics of Ayurveda, Pranayama, meditation, yoga. And through that, learning these simple techniques, you'll be on the road. And then you can go deeper and you'll be on the road to recovery. So I let down my moment of disbelief and just went with it and just followed her advice. And then that took me down a whole rabbit hole. Because just through learning simple pranayama breathing techniques, it was a huge shift in my stress levels and my ability to calm down and actually think clearly. And I got a lot of relief from just the simple basic advice I was getting and the meditation techniques. And I started to discover like uh, other uh, books like The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. Uh, he also is a pharmacist. It was written in the 1940s. He studied Ayurveda, but he also was a Christian into Christianity. And he blended the two together. It was amazing, actually. Two perspectives of Christian science and um, Vedic kind of uh, philosophies and how they are so similar. And he came up with a system of reprogramming the subconscious mind. He's actually deemed like the father of personal development. And it was really enlightening. And I actually started to practice these techniques of using breath with mantra, visualization techniques to speak to the unconscious mind the area that controls the autonomic nervous system to calm the nervous system down, the, the immune system to, to actually become back to normal again and do what it's supposed to do. Because in autoimmune disease, what happens is that your system gets confused, your immune system gets confused. It can't tell what's actually a threat and it starts to attack healthy cells. And that's what causes autoimmune. It's a malfunctioning immune system. But where does that malfunction come from? So there's a really good book as well that I read, uh, Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton, where he talks about um, experiments where they take cells out of cultures and put them from a normal culture into a, an environment of stress. And they showed how the cells would switch off and go into defense mode and by going into defense mode, it would mean that all of the resources are being used now to defend itself, not to thrive. So it would go into survival rather than thrive, thriving. So this was really eye-opening. And it shows that when you're in an environment of stress, it's very hard to heal. So I started to analyze my life and all the sources of stress. I realized that 
I mean, my dear parents, I love them, but they were giving me more stress because they really were very much conditioned into the this traditional, uh, conventional medical system. My mum's a, a doctor, actually, and she was really freaked out when I told her I don't want to take the medications anymore, to follow the advice of the doctor. And there was a lot of skepticism from there and a lot of fear. So being in a fear environment is not going to do you any favors so i had to move completely i luckily i found a friend who took care of me um he's also a doctor but more uh, open-minded and and i went into music i started to make music he's a musician as well actually a lot of the music uh is co-produced with him and i changed my environment and we started to have more fun and be more creative and laugh a lot this was a huge part of the healing and then i started to go deep on these breathing techniques and using them in the sauna. And I learned this one particular breathing technique that where you extend your exhalation and chanting Aum and extending your exhalation. And also that's when I started to learn Kumbhaka, breath retention techniques. And what I did was I started to use this in different environments. So I, I loved the, the peace and tranquility of being in a sauna and really um, getting all that heat shock benefits of of intense heat on the body. And I, I later on learned the benefits of the sauna. I was drawn to the sauna for a reason because that heat shock, it produces a lot of endorphins and neuropeptides that gives you like a, a, a feel good sensation, a, a high, like that actually makes you feel good and relax. And it allows blood flow to flow to where it needs to go. It also allows your, your consciousness of your cells to start seeing things with more uh, positivity, less fear, and this also improves autoimmune diseases because, as I was saying with Bruce Lipton, epigenetically, certain cells get switched on and off based on stress in the environment. And for me, uh, this autoimmune disease affected the colon and it was triggered because of the environment, the hostile environment I was in, this negative environment. But I believe that with the knowledge I now have, I could have stayed in a more hostile environment, but changed my perception of it and mitigate the stress through the breathing techniques and maybe made more of a difference in that environment. Maybe not, who knows? But I do know that with these techniques, we can actually change the, our perception and relationship with the environment. And this way we get protected against going into negative situations because we can't avoid stress. We can't. There's all sorts of different forms of stress. You know, who knew that there was going to be a, a virus pandemic? Okay, like really, like on a mass scale, how, how are we to know? And it's caused a lot of stress. But we may not be able to control those environmental factors and events, but we can have control over how we react within. This is what we're going to talk more about. And this is where a lot of the healing comes from. Changing our inner world, our inner environment. Creating an alignment with our inner world and the outer world. And through that, actually changing our entire environment and ended up in amazing situations like I am now. So we're going to go into this in a bit more depth. So just to recap, stress, environmental factors can affect the consciousness of your cells and your immune function can get uh, confused and start attacking its own cells. This is autoimmune conditions. This is, this is what autoimmune disease is. And changing environments can really help with this. And the breath can be a great tool to help us protect against this.